Welcome to a special edition of Hashtag Ask 31. Jeff Merrick alongside Elliot Friedman. And Elliot, we mentioned it's a special edition uh, because we have hockey player turned cross Canada traveler, <laughs> Oilers captain Connor McDavid along with us. Uh, Connor, thanks so much for doing this today. And um, in your own words, describe the little adventure you just went through to, to, to get back to Ontario. Yeah, it was lots of fun. Um, I just thought it'd be the safest thing to do than, than hopping on a plane and, and heading home. Um, just uh, rent a little RV and made our way across uh, across the country and I mean not all the way across the country just Edmonton to, to, to Toronto but uh, it was fun we had a lot of fun doing it and uh, I'm not ready to turn it around and head back anytime soon <laughs> but, uh, um, I just uh, yeah we had a lot of fun it's something that I've always thought about doing and you know we have some time to kill now and, and thought why not you know, my sister's done at the cross country drive. Uh, I've never done it, although I do maintain that it's something uh, that Canadians should uh, at least give a shot. What was the toughest stretch coming from Edmonton to Toronto? The toughest stretch was probably right when we got into Ontario. Honestly, it was uh, it was easy driving through the prairies. We didn't have too many too much wind. Um, it was it was smooth sailing all the way through there, and then we get into Ontario, and uh, it gets down to a single lane, and and uh, and you got trucks coming the other way and it's winding and you're up in up in the mountains. I didn't even realize there was mountains up there, but you know, you're up in the up in the mountains, I guess, and you know, winding through the through that and you know, there's cliffs on one side and, and uh it was it was tight at times, but uh we made it through. You know, a lot of us are used to driving SUVs or pickups or something like that. I I understand you drive an SUV. Did you go over many curbs or anything like that how did you find it <laughs> negotiating that thing yeah we uh we had a couple uh, a couple of close calls for sure um we had it uh, for about a week before we made the trip so we did a little bit of practicing before we we took off and um it was definitely an adjustment but uh definitely happy to be back driving my SUV you know <laughs> so connor as i'm sure you can tell elliot's uh, around sports and hockey night in canada has become our designated beard grower. Uh, are you the designated beard grower for the Oilers? <laughs> uh, we don't have one of those, but uh, I, I haven't shaved in a long time. I'm, I'm looking pretty rough right now, but uh, that's, uh, that's what you get when you're in quarantine. Have you been able to, you know, what kind of workouts have you done? What kinds of things have you been doing to keep yourself ready to go? Because I was talking about this with a player the other day. It used to be that in the 60s and 70s, players would show up out of shape and then they would use training camp to get in shape. Now that never happens, but this is the first time for a lot of guys, you're not going to be in skating hockey shape when you show up. Yeah. Um, I'm lucky that uh, I have a little bit of an area in my, in my place back in Edmonton to work out and, and it's got kind of everything that you need and been in contact with uh, you know my trainers back home and, and uh, you know, they gave me a good program to, to work off of and, um, you know, so I've, I've been doing that, um, now that I'm home, um, just same type of thing. I don't have exactly what I had back there, but you know, I brought, uh, brought enough stuff home that I should be able to get by. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough. It's going to be different. Um, but, uh, everyone's in the same boat and, um, it's going to be a race to see who can get in shape the, the quickest. How, how, uh, how quick a rebounder are you? We know from <laughs> a injury point of view, you, I mean, your comeback story was miraculous, uh, as we saw documented, how quick can you get back into traditional Connor McDavid shape? Yeah, for me, I, I try not to take too much time off the ice. So um, this has been one of the longer stretches aside from probably last summer. But uh, so, yeah, it's going to be tough, um, you know, but uh, I feel like I can I can turn it around pretty quick. And, um, you know, but it's it's not just about me. It's about what's safe for for all the players and, and everyone, uh, everyone that's going to have to do this. And you know, make sure that everyone gets enough time to, to prepare as they need to and, and make sure that it's uh, safest both from you know, the, the coronavirus standpoint and, and health and safety of our bodies. Just make sure hips and groins and, and everything's going to be feeling good um, and up to, uh, up to how they should. Is there anything you've picked up over the last two months? A new hobby? Uh, anything like that, that you've tried that you may not have had the chance to do that you've kind of enjoyed? New language? <laughs> <laughs> not a whole lot. Uh, no, but I'm not very good with uh, technology, so I've gotten pretty good at these Zoom calls and uh, <laughs> my laptop, so which I'm not normally good at. It's usually just just used for Netflix on the road, so it's been uh, been used for a little bit more than that uh, over the last little bit, just with all these video conference calls that go on and whatnot. So um, I would say my technology game's gotten a little bit better. 
How often do the uh, Oilers as a group get together on uh, on Zoom calls, uh, and who's the most annoying on them? <laughs> I can't answer that, but uh, <laughs> uh, but there is someone. There is definitely someone. There is someone. There is someone that popped up, but uh, I'll, I'll, I won't mention his name. But uh, we get together every now and then, just discuss everything that uh, that's going on, both with uh, you know with the comeback, to the return to play, and uh, everything that's going on with the the PA. So just keeping everyone up to date and, and making sure that everyone is uh, is informed and and uh, you know has has uh, you know answer at least uh, most questions that we can. Okay, if not most most annoying, then who's the most entertaining? Like, who's the guy that keeps it light and keeps everyone laughing? Uh, James Neal. I mean, he's uh, he's hilarious. I think uh, everyone knows that about him. He's such a good guy, and and uh, you know, he's uh, he's a guy that uh, that definitely keeps it light and entertaining for sure. Uh, you mentioned uh, just some calls to realize what's going on. You you had said earlier that if uh, we do come back and hopefully we do, you don't want to go right to the playoffs. You need some exhibition or regular season games first. Still feel the same way, Connor? I mean, I've gone back and forth on that just with as this whole thing has gone on. Um, you know, I think it's been a lot longer than than people anticipated. So, um, you know, if we have to uh, just jump into playoffs, then then that's what we have to do. Um, you know, I still think that. Everyone wants to uh, to to you know try to play some sort of a regular season game, I'm, I'm, but you know I'm not. Uh, that's not my decision to make. So mm-hmm. um, you know we'll we'll do what uh, what we have to do to get back and make sure that it's fair for everybody and and uh, you know whatever format it is, um, you know make sure that it's uh, it's. Uh, you know, as, as, as close to normal as it can be. I'm curious, have you, have you watched much of your, of the Oilers this year? Have you want, gone back to watch shifts or games or anything like that from this season, hoping to get that extra 2% for when it comes back? I haven't done it too. Not, I haven't done much of that. Um, I'm not a guy that, that watches uh, a ton of, uh, you know, the, the Oilers games or anything like that, but um, you know, I've watched uh, some clips here and there. Um, you know, just to, just to try to keep the mind sharp for sure. You know, the Edmonton Oilers are one of those teams, like, I mean, everybody, you know, hates what we're going through right now and every team wishes they were playing. Uh, but there are a couple of teams that you look at and you say, man, this is a real tough break for this squad. And I think your Oilers are one of them. Um, expectations uh, have been exceeded, uh, perhaps not uh, in your mind, but from viewers' points of view, observers' point of, points of view um, as well. What's different? with this year's edition of the Oilers? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a good question. I mean, obviously what, what jumps out is we have a lot of new you know, management, coaching staff is all new. We brought in a couple couple new players, but I think it's it's just the vibe around the team that, that's changed. Um, you know, everyone talks about that winning culture and everything like that, um, you know, and, and, and you know, we, we didn't have that for, for a number of years and, and, you know, it feels like this year just bringing in a couple of older guys, Smitty and Neeler being, you know, mm-hmm. Biggest ones and and just changing that whole that whole culture and, and that whole mindset um, I think has been huge. Obviously, obviously management has done a good job of going out and getting players. Um, you look at some of those euros that we brought over. I mean, um, they've done such a great job filling in roles and and um, you know, contributing when they can. And um, obviously, coaches have done a great job, uh, you know, in, implementing a new system and and really focusing on guys buying in and, and making sure that defensively we're, we're being as solid as we can. And obviously the players for, for gelling and, and uh, coming together, I think uh, this year has been, been good uh, on, on all those fronts. Have you watched many of the classic games? I have not. No. Mm-hmm. I was wondering, cause I, I'm watching like some of those games now and I'm trying to imagine Connor McDavid in the eighties. And <laughs> you know, I, I like, I, like I would think that obviously the game was totally different then. And I believe the best players can adapt to any particular era. You'll figure it out. But I wonder when, you know, when, when players were scoring 150, 200 points, have you ever thought what it would be like for you to play in the eighties? Uh, it's crossed my mind before, but I'd also like to see what, what Wayne Gretzky would do with the, the equipment that we have now. I think, uh, I think that's the other way to look at it as well. I mean, we've, we've come so far on the skates and the stick technology and, and all that type of stuff that uh, I think the, the players from the 80s would uh, would do just fine if they had what, what we had now. 
um, playing in today's generation. But uh, I do think every now and then what, what the game would be like. I mean, they were just so high scoring and, and, uh, and wild. And um, they just looked like they were, they were lots of fun. 200 points. I, th- I think you could have got 200 points. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not going to comment on that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that'd be a fun year for sure. You don't have many <laughs> nights. You know, there have been a, a couple of different times, Connor, uh, whether it's previous in the OHL or now in the NHL. And one moment specifically that I'm referring to where you made hockey look like a different sport. There was a moment this year in the game against the Toronto Maple Leafs um you're coming down on morgan riley and you made it look like basketball can you <laughs> can you walk us through that goal um yeah so i knew just kind of breaks up a pass and he, and he throws it up and and um you know, i'm thinking it's going to be a two-on-one so i'm just waiting for for news to catch up or i think maybe there was a d-man trying to jump on jump in on the other side and trying to make it a two-on-one uh, i i wasn't trying to make it oh sorry hold on yes he disagrees with your analysis. I'm just talking on the dog, sorry. <laughs> uh, dog doesn't like that very much. Hard dog. What kind of dog is it? He's a miniature Bernadoodle. <laughs> nice. and, and it's Leonard, right? Leonard is your dog's name? Yeah, Leonard. Hey, right. Finish off the thought on the on the goal, you know, coming down on Morgan Riley, and you make that cut. And I remember watching it and thinking to myself, what sport am I watching? Like, <laughs> that looks like basketball, Connor. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I was saying, it just... I wasn't trying to make it a one-on-one. I was trying to make it a two-on-one and wait for some help. And um, that's why I'm not really looking at him. Just uh, just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen. And then, you know, I realized that no one's coming and, and just try to make a quick cut. And, and uh, luckily, Mo kind of bit and uh, able to get around and make a good move on the goalie and, and uh, score a pretty nice goal. Okay, so that was one outstanding moment for the Oilers this season. Another one, I'm just going to say two words, and you let me know what comes to your mind right away. Goalie fight. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was a special one. I think uh, the Battle the of battle Alberta this year has been really fun uh, to be involved in. Um, it's fun sometimes just to sit back. I mean, I was just on the bench for that. I was just sitting back and taking it all in. And, and you were mentioning the, the 80s before Elliot, and, and it felt mm-hmm. like the 80s that, that night. I mean, just the hits and the, the brawls and the goalie fight. It was just, uh, the whole thing was wild. And, and uh, to go in there and, and get the win as well made it uh, that much sweeter. I'm just curious, when you guys got back to the dressing room when you saw Smith, A, <laughs> what was he doing? And B, what did you all say? Everyone was, everyone was so fired up. Uh, I just remember coming back in the room and, and uh, there was lots of, uh, lots of laughs and, and stories being told of different perspectives and, you know, guys in the brawl and what they were thinking. And there's a funny clip of Nursey right before the whole thing. And he's standing right beside Tal and he's saying, go fight him, go yeah. fight him. And uh, he was telling that story and it was hilarious. And um, yeah, just the whole thing was, was funny. But at the end of the day, we were also trying to regroup and, and focus because, you know, the game felt like it was just going, getting out of hand. We still had like a minute left in the second period and we're in the so, <laughs> so much going on that, that it almost felt like there, was, there wasn't a hockey game going on. But we needed to regroup and focus, and, and uh, thankfully we, we, we did that and, and got a win. You know, you mentioned Ryan Nugent Hopkins a second ago. He had a nice one with Sean Monaghan. Did you know that he had that in him? I, I've seen that a couple times from Nuge. Nuge, uh, Nuge doesn't fight a ton. I think he probably fights once a year, and, and every time he puts on a good show. Um, he's, uh, he's tough. He's as tough as they come, and, and uh, he proved that uh, against Monaghan. That, I mean, they, they were fighting, then they were separated, and they were back at it again. I didn't know, uh, didn't know when the fight was going to end, but uh, that was a pretty good tilt from both sides. And Nugent Hopkins, like, you remember when he first came in and now you see him, he's pretty ripped now. Like, he's bigger, strong bigger. guy, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, man, he's putting in a lot of work. Um, he's still got that baby face, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's back for sure. Um, in the couple of moments that we have left, left with you, uh, we can't do an interview with you, Connor, without talking a little bit uh, about Leon Dreisaitl, who seems to have taken his game to that next level just your thoughts on on playing with with dry who has one of the most unique sticks we've ever seen that canoe paddle blade of his it's uh, enormous give us give us Connor mcdavid's thoughts on leon dry yeah i mean it's uh he's so fun to play with he's probably the best passer that that i've ever seen um like you said he uses that huge huge canoe paddle for a blade and and uh you know he knocks down pucks and, and strips guys and 
um, you know, just makes these passes where it makes it so easy for you. Um, you know, just sucks guys in and, and uh, you know, kind of dishes it off and, and you're kind of free to, and, and you're off to the races. So such a good player and, and he's worked so hard at his game. Um, I think the biggest thing is his shot. I mean, when he came into the league, he had a good shot, but, you know, his one timer now is, is lethal. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, you can score from anywhere. And, and uh, I mean, you don't score, score 50 by mistake. So, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's definitely developed that for sure. Do you guys no. just drool about, sorry, do you guys just drool about the idea of playing overtime? Because when Edmonton goes to three on three <laughs> and you and Leon are on the, like there needs, I've always maintained, there needs to be a Twitter feed that just alerts people to when Edmonton is going into overtime to watch you and Leon. We, we used to, we had <laughs> like three, three solid years or two solid years in overtime, but, but this year we've, uh, we haven't been real good. Um, we actually got split up, uh, for overtime. So, um, we used to dream of overtime and, and pray that games went to overtime, but not so much this year. I'm not sure what it is. I think we, me and him only have, uh, one, one combined, uh, goal together in overtime. He's got, I think a couple more than I do, but, um, <clears throat> You know, it's 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 tough now. I mean, coaches are coaches are smart guys, and and they uh, they adapt. And, and overtime has slowed down a little bit, I would say. And and um, you know, before it was just wide open and running and gun and two on one and breakaway and whatever. So um, you know, I think coaches have adapted pretty well, but uh, it's still fun to be a part of and, and fun to be out there with. Well, you know, speaking of fun, three years ago you went to the playoffs for the for the first time, and I know every player thinks, okay, I'm going to be going there all the time now. That time, you know, you guys probably didn't know yet really what to expect. Now, when this resumes, you're a playoff team, and you must be so excited for the thought about getting on there with this improved Oiler team and going for the Stanley Cup. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm so excited about it. Um you know, obviously if there's a, a, you know, we play, if we play out the regular season then there's still lots of work left to be done to be a playoff team, but, you know, we've put ourselves in a pretty good spot here to, to play in the playoffs uh, at some point. And, and uh, whenever that is, uh, I can't wait to be, uh, be a part of that and, and uh, you know, chase after something special. Okay. Uh, Connor, before we let you go over your right shoulder, there is a piece of art. Can you describe it to us and who's responsible for it on the wall? It is uh, a whole lot of nothing. It's uh, <laughs> black and white kind of, I don't even know what you would describe it. I guess that's what they call abstract. So uh, <laughs> I think I actually might've picked that one out. That was, uh, that was me. It uh, goes well there. I think you guys can tell me though. It's better than our backdrop. I mean, yeah. Elliot's I got a, got, I got a got wood, wood, wood wall behind me. I'm wood what, what paneling do I do? critique and, someone else's art. <laughs> I've got a boring home office slash studio. So uh, Connor, you win the day and uh, listen, we always appreciate it. Uh, when we get a chance uh, to catch up. Look very much, very much look forward to seeing you back on the ice sooner than later. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll catch up soon. Thank you very much guys. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you very much. And with that, we'll wrap it up on behalf of Elliot Friedman and our entire crew. Thanks for joining us on Ask 31, our special guest this week, Oilers captain Connor McDavid.